So I bake white bread. It's a recipe that I've memorized over the years. And I thought, just for giggles, I'll share it. Let's see. So what we have here. I'm um, going to have to look back frequently at you just because i got to check the monitor to make sure you're aimed right because I'm just doing this with a cell phone. What we've got here is, now there's two cups of all-purpose white flour in here. All right? That's for the kneading in, which I will do in the large bowl because I don't at the moment have a kitchen table. Uh, I'm going to talk to Dan and move the old one back up in here because I, I need a table. Now we have another four cups of flour here. Pardon my belly. We got four cups of flour, the same flour here, and I buy the organic. This is why I bake my own bread, primarily, just because organic white bread is hard to come by. Um, nice big old bowl for mixing stuff in. We've got a tablespoon of yeast in a quarter cup of lukewarm water. We have one cup of hot milk, in this case almond milk, with butter melted into it. I nuke it in the nuker so that the butter melts in. And that this is a cup of water, which I poured extra almond milk in it, but you wind up with two cups of fluid, a cup of hot milk, a cup of cold water. But it's also got uh, one tablespoon of salt and two tablespoons of sugar already in it. So we put the milk in the water. And we put that in the big old bowl here. There we go. All right. Yeah, so I have to do all of this with the camera off. But anyways, I will be mixing the yeast then into that. And again, I need some utensils. I want to scrape the contents out. Stir the whole thing together. And then I will start stirring in the flour. And I'll get back to you on that. Okay, so I'm going to do this stuff with two hands because I don't have a tripod and all that set up. It would be nice to have a camera person. So I do stir in the flour a little bit at a time. I find it easier that way. Otherwise, you wind up with these big gloppy clumps. You don't have to get all the lumps out. It's not important. Something that is important is making sure that you do the yeast into the water before you start everything else to give it time to bloom. Um, and make sure it's thoroughly wet when you do it. And another thing that really helps your bread baking is have a warm kitchen and have all of your ingredients unrefrigerated. Like, to get them out of the fridge early so they warm up. Room temperature, they say. And, you know, have a warm place to do your resting. I may actually have poor bread today because the kitchen is not terribly warm. The windows have been open. Um, but we'll see. And I do plan on making a butter cake, which I guess I can also record that, huh? Oh, well, there you go. It's it's gloppy enough. Now we've got, now we're into actually stirring. So we're going to stir this until it's fully incorporated. And then we're going to transfer it to this bowl. And we're going to get our hands all floury and be right back then. As you can see, it's all incorporated. It's a good big lump. It's not adhering to the sides of the bowl. Um, now what you got to do is you got to get your hands all floury. And I can only do one because I don't want to get the camera all floury. But you do that with your hands. Then using the spoon, you transfer this into that. And then with your two floury hands, you take over. Put the spoon, you, you scrape the spoon off with your fingers and you take over with your hands. So I'll be back to you um, after I have done some of that, then washed off my hands. So here's a tip. Um, use lots of flour both on your hands and on the spoon in order to remove the dough from it. It helps keep the, the, the flour, keeps the dough in its place, basically. So, lots and lots and lots of flour. Okay, we're gonna wash this before we continue. This needs to be washed and greased. So you're gonna take the tin foil wrapping off the butter and you're going to rub butter all over the inside after it's been washed. So let me go do that. So I've decided to go with the alternative uh, buttering tool, folded waxed paper. Uh, you just, oh, see if I had room temperature butter, this would help so much. But I don't. So anyway, 
you get the butter on there, and it's so much easier with two hands, not holding a camera, but you can see the butter is spreading. So anyways, two hands is the way to do this. Butter that bowl. Now you may have um, different dishes and you may not need to wash one first, I, but you know, you got to have it buttered because you're going to be transferring the um, kneaded dough into it and you just, you don't need to have to mess around. You want it ready. There you go. Nice and greasy. And we'll save the wax paper for the loaf pans later. Now, you don't have to use butter. You can use coconut oil. You can use um, uh, lard. You can use shortening. I don't want to hear about man-made butter alternatives. I, I don't want to hear about them. Use them, whatever. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> All right, now we're getting in here with your hands all nice and floury so it doesn't stick. And um, away we go, man. You can't shirk on the kneading. You absolutely cannot shirk. You've got to beat it up. We, at the early stages, you can't beat it up. It'll stick to your knuckles. You do lots of folding. And there's also too much flour to do a lot of tossing. So mostly you're just folding in that flour and you're folding it in. Fold and squish. Fold and squish. You're adding air while you fold as well as bringing in more flour. Now if you were making a raisin bread, this is where you put your, your dried fruit and raisins at this stage. Um, but a raisin bread now you want more you want some eggs in that bread uh, you want an increase in the amount of butter and you need to add a lot more sugar and a lot less salt because the sugar that's in this bread is almost all yeast food it's there to get the yeast going before the flour breaks down enough to make it happy which is what you're kneading for one of the reasons you're doing this kneading is now you're on a chair on wheels in a bowl because I don't have a table but what you're doing with this kneading is breaking down the flour and feeding the yeast so that it will rise in the next two hours um, which will evolve first in the bowl and then in the loaf pans and then it'll go in the oven so after you've kneaded it for at least 15 or 20 minutes and we're not going to record the whole thing because it's too long then you will let it sit in a warm place in the bowl for an hour. Then you'll take it out, break it into two, because this is a two loaf recipe, and it freezes well. I cut them in half and freeze the halves. So then you will break it into two and shape it into two loaf shapes, stick it in the pans, and let it rise again. And I will be showing you those steps. <sighs> I'm getting tired but now I can start beating on it more because it's getting strong enough to tolerate the beating and also start putting some of that flour in deliberately you know just start stuffing it in there as you go make a sticky spot fill it with flour fold it over I've been doing this recipe for 50 years, I kid you not. I started when I was eight years old, watching my mother do it and helping her. This is the recipe my mother used. So she would throw in some eggs to make a richer, a richer bread. Eggs are bloody expensive and unnecessary, so we've left that part out. But this is where she puts in, put in the eggs when she was first started kneading. Right at the very end is when she added her eggs. So if you want to add eggs. Put them in just as you start working on the flour and the kneading. Just make a little hollow, crack those eggs in and mix them in. And they'll vanish. A little late now. I don't want to waste the eggs. Okay, I'll be back. Oh, my stamina is not as good as the doughs, but we're getting there. I think we've gone about 5-10 minutes now. <clears throat> Still got some flour in the bottom. Mostly I'm just punching it because I really don't have the strength or the energy to lift and throw. But oh, it is a good thing to do. Lots of punching too. Anyways, it's really oh it's 
getting very close. It's time as much as it is activity. Action and time together. It's not just folding in air. The beating, the, the violence, the speed of movement also somehow affects the way the gluten breaks down and flows and becomes a better bread and you get more air and you get a better bread. It becomes better incorporated. But oh man, you get a workout, let me tell you. It helps if you're mad at someone. My mother used to, said she used to imagine her husband's face, my father's face. And that really helped a lot. And I gotta say, it's not a bad idea to imagine someone's face. Uh, not that I wanna feed that side of my, but you know, gotta beat up that dough. I'm done, my back won't let me. That's as far as we're going today. That then goes in this the buttered bowl. First you put you put it top side down to get the butter on the top. Then you turn it around. All nice and pretty. Now you cover it in a fresh clean tea towel that you've just made wet and wrung damp. So it's damp, it's not dripping. And you find some place to put that thing. Oh, that's warm. I should have moved those oven mitts, but anyways, you leave it sit for an hour or until doubled in size. See you in an hour. Kitchen management tip. Before you go off to do something else, clean everything that you're not using. Clean your kitchen. Clean the bowls that you've used and the cups that you've used. Clean it. Well, I'm close to a half hour late here, but it's time. It has doubled in size, you see? How lovely is that, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I, um, I buttered the loaves already, like so. The two loaves. And, um, now I've got to wash my hands before I go any farther. Alrighty. It's okay to push all the air out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, that's fine. Split that puppy in half, massage into the shape of a loaf. Again, don't worry about the air coming out. It's fine, it's gonna rise again. Rise again, my friend. And just like the first time, you're gonna go top in, get some grease on it, flip it around. But in this case, you're going to, hmm, I'll show you on the second one. But I can move it like so. You're gonna punch, gonna punch that dough right down into the corners because she's gonna rise right all the way to the top before you come back in an hour. I'm a half hour late, but like I said, it's a cool kitchen. Bread is more art than science in the sense that uh, there's a whole lot of micro decisions that cause minor changes that may actually at times be desirable rather than do one thing wrong and it blows up. It's kind of science, you know. You gotta be much more precise with science. Now you can bake scientifically and you can get great results. Don't forget to clean this before you leave the kitchen. But we're gonna take them and we're gonna put them back up, in my case, on the microwave, a nice high spot out of the drafts where, it's warm, where heat collects and we're gonna put the cloth over it and we're gonna let it sit again for another hour, or until doubled in size. We're preheating our oven to 410 Fahrenheit. Pardon my nostrils. There you go. Oven's preheated. Bread goes in oven. And there you go. Now, your oven is at 410 but only for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, you turn it down to 350. Here we are at the 15 minute mark. We take her down to 350. Pop 
apologize for the back beard. backwards. I have never learned how to fix that. Anyway, this is going to go for another hour. Now, I'm not going to use the timer on the stove because I can't be bothered to click the up arrow that many times. I'm just going to mark the time from the clock. Three, fifty-one. So, ten to five, the bread's ready. Also, and I will show this to you, you test it by not tapping on it with a finger and the sound goes from a dull thud to a hollow thud. It's been an hour. Let's see what we got. Oh, hey. Looky, looky. Looky there. It's hard to do one-handed. Uh, well, we didn't get a whole lot of rise. That's all right. Like I said, the kitchen was a little cool. Yes. It's nice. Relatively warm butter somewhere. Oh, that's very warm butter. Okay, that'll do the job. Mm. Mm. Nice and spreadable. I like to work fast while the bread's hot. The maximum melty goodness. But I do miss my old brush. Oh, I have my old brush. Why am I not using it? What crazy person am I? There we go. Mm. It looks like when you put oil into wood, you know, and it richens up and it gets darker and nicer. Yeah. Hotness. I wanted it to cool off a little so I could handle it, but I like steaming hot bread with butter on it. We have to cut both loaves in half to get them in the plastic bags for the freezer. So this one had a really weird... It looks more torn by the knife than anything, but I don't know. Oh, and that one's just gorgeous, huh? Mm-hmm. So... Just to keep them from drying up, we put them back together until they're finished cooling because the bag doesn't like it. Let's get that butter. Oh, let's go, let's go, huh? Yes. Let's go, let's go. Mm. I hope you enjoy your home-baked bread, too. <laughs>